Hello, everybody. I am Will. And I'm Kristen. And this is So I'm Watching Lost, Season 1, Episode 10. Raised by another. Okay. This episode is fantastic. Yeah. Not necessarily the plot of the episode, but in its place. Vibes. It, but <laughs> yeah. its placement within the first season, it's it, it, it is properly taking a baton and handing it to the second half. And it's really sort of, it's where we start getting genre. Yeah, okay. I'm second guessing myself. I'm doubting my... No, you're right. I think you're right. <laughs> well, we have this quote unquote monster, but it's been it's silent been, since... Yeah, weeks now. And I, I With mean... With just the, that one little mention from Rousseau in the previous episode. And like... My the first place my mind went when mm. I was watching this was it's a dinosaur, which is mm. though science fiction, it's still firmly rooted in nature. Sure. And this is when we start going in this opposite direction. And it's like this episode is a horror. Yeah. Episode. Even with, from Claire's from a, dream that opens. From a human yeah. place, it's horror. Her her lifestyle or her the the predicament she finds herself yeah. in. And then from a um, fantasy, for lack of a better word, because yeah. we have this Rosemary's Baby esque, like yeah. she's having th these dreams. E you're right, even the the dream that opens it. Uh -huh. What's happening? You know what's happening. But I, I don't understand. Everyone pays the price now. <laughs> Lock with the two eyes and crystals, of course. Uh, but the second he had crystals on his thing, I was like, oh, is he a crystal bitch? Okay, I might. <laughs> I might have just gotten some more. <laughs> the problem is just that he's like a Pisces. That's why we don't find. But and and just the imagery, the the crying baby and her unswaddling it mm -hmm. to the, reveal nothing. The goo. It, well, yeah. Because it's not, it's not blood. It's like gray. It's yeah. very, it's very. Uh, speaking of gray, <laughs> when Jack is lifting up her shirt to look for like an injection. What mark, was that? Yeah, he had this this thing like like a needle. Like he, he stabbed me with it. <laughs> I was like, oh, is the baby dead? Like, is the is did they not stomach? plan for that to be seen? I don't think it was on purpose. It, it looked. So I can't so believe bad. you. I can't believe you yeah. mentioned that because I because I thought it and then I it was, was like, like this. Color. Yeah. yeah, I I think it was. I don't think they intended for it to maybe be maybe not. Yeah, on screen the belly. <laughs> That's so funny because I I clocked yeah. that too. But I was, I was like, oh. I was like, I'm gonna let that go. Uh, we have sort of the beginning of a trend of Jack completely dismissing and gaslighting women okay. <laughs> people. <laughs> He is right. Sure, sure, sure. Pregnant women can have mm -hmm. extremely lucid feeling dreams that where the, you are certain something happened. I think he approached her wrongly. He's approaching her like yeah. she's hysterical. Yeah. And and she keeps jumping to you think I made this up and no one's like, "Oh, I believe you believe this." Exactly. I'm just not convinced from my outside. Like, I, yeah. I believe something is happening. Yeah. But I don't think that like someone is creepily going around poking needles into your stomach except they are <sighs> this is one of the most but, chilling reveals no it, it super is that's not to say i mean that does seem like the lowest option on the totem pole that some maniac is walking around trying to inject your belly with something and the fact that that is what actually is happening we don't actually even have confirmation for that yet but we, it's spoil, it's yeah, yeah. It's just like, it, it, it's just, ugh. And then her backstory is so... Fuck it. Fuck Thomas. Ugh. Men ain't it. <laughs> None of them. His name is Keir O'Donnell. I feel like he was just recently in something that we watched and we liked. Okay. But I don't remember what it was, so... She gets pregnant. She's hysterical. And he talks her down and convinces her that they're going to have this baby is going to be great. She literally is like, you can see her mentally dialing the abortion clinic. Uh -huh. She's like, 
it, we can't do this. It's ridiculous. I make $5 an hour at like a fish fry place. She's like, no, it's, and he's like, what if it would be amazing though? Let's do it. And then he gets cold feet, I guess. But like I... three months later. So she's like four and a half months into this pregnancy. I thought he was banging the friend. Maybe we find that out Is that, that one of those later? deleted scenes, or did it's, I make that up? It's maybe a deleted scene, or it's maybe something we find out in another uh, flashback. Because that, friend is, that, that friend is not necessary. Thomas cleaned out his whole loft. I'm officially moving in on Tuesday. That is great. I know. He's awesome. No. So it makes me think that there maybe. was... So she goes to see a psychic, and he... Bad form. Psychics really shouldn't... Oh, no, take all the money. Leave me alone. Like, it's just, it's, it's sort of. <laughs> it's really dicey. I'm sorry. Um, I can't. I can't. Uh, I'm, I'm not doing this reading. No, you, you were going to say something. You'll have to leave. Now. I have an actual, it, it was a, a, a personal anecdote, but it was like a friend of the family, mm. her brother. So urban legend territory. <laughs> a friend of a friend of a friend. But regardless, her brother like saw a psychic in New Orleans and the psychic was like, what do you want to know? Mm. She was like, do you want to know everything? Do you want good news? Do you want bad news? Do you want... And he was like, I only want to know things that will help. He was mm. like, I don't want to know. And so she basically was like, if there's anything that you want to do before 50, you should probably do it. And he died at 49. Oh my God. <laughs> But you kind of have to wonder if that's one of those like self fulfilling prophecies, like if that was always in the back of his mind, and then something, mm. you know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to know. I don't no. think I want to know. No. Uh, regardless, what happens? Well, he yeah. So she's like four and a half months pregnant, and Thomas is like, "Oh, I can't do this anymore." Because so because his art, he can't raise a baby. He needs to make art, and I'm like, believe me, I understand the struggle, but also. That's arguably the one thing you can do yeah. while raising a baby. Also, first of all, there is not one art supply to be found in that apartment. There was a lot of ugly art, though. There was a lot of <laughs> ugly art. And second of all, what is his job that he's currently doing? Because he's already dressed like a dad. I, I think it's making art in the apartment Claire pays for. <laughs> It's unbelievable. And we do find out something mysterious, but she she can't ask her mother for help or money because she'll disown her. And her friend is like, she kind of already has. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what that's about. Um, Basically, the psychic just starts. She goes back to him. Oh, OK. She's she's more pregnant. when Thomas leaves her, she goes back and she's like, I hoped you might reconsider, reconsider giving me my reading. And he was like, what I saw the first time was blurry. And she's like, and blurry's bad. And he's like sort of yes and so he starts reading her again and the thing that he says is no matter what you have to be the one to because she baby. thinks it has to do with thomas like yeah. abandoning her and he yeah. was like he's irrelevant he, yeah he, he will not be a part of your life or the baby's life no one's life going forward and so she's just like well i'm gonna give the baby up for adoption and it's like that's psychological because you have yeah. a you have a psychic being like you immediately go to like a Hitler paradox where it's like, if anyone but you raises this baby, yeah. it will be bad. Yeah. <laughs> I was fighting for my life there. Bless you. <laughs> I might leave that in. That was funny. So, so Claire, she, she's really like <laughs> compounding psychological terror daily. Oh, yeah. She's like, it's like. <laughs> It's ridiculous. Layers on layers on layers. And so she basically is like, no, I'm going to give the baby up for adoption. And he's like, you literally can't. Like, it, that would be the worst thing for everybody. The baby's surrounded by danger. And she's like, you know, it's very dicey, confusing psychic language. And she's like, I don't know what you mean. And he even gives her her money back, which is at, like meant to be a show of good faith or whatever. I don't know. It's... It's interesting. The, but both these actors, both Nick Jameson and William Map Mapother, I think, yeah, get ample or, or get time to shine yeah. with sort of like a nefarious, slack-jawed stare. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll but tell you what. 
So basically, uh, he, the psychic is like, just kidding, I found a couple in well, LA. Well, that's after she decides not to give the baby to a couple in Melbourne. Like, she's there with a pen in her hand, and three pens won't produce ink. And she's like, oh. There's, like, magic nope. in this episode. Yeah. It's, it's good. It's interesting. And it, your mileage may vary with where the show goes mm -hmm. with this direction. Uh, I, I, speaking broadly... I like a lot of it, even if I think very little of it truly lands. Yeah. Would you say? I agree with that. Um, but yeah, so he finds a couple in L.A. and makes sure that whatever she does, she has to be on that plane. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, the implication is that he knew it was going to go down. Yeah. But Charlie's the one who figures that out, because uh, Charlie is... Like d deep into his callbacks, his interview to be the baby's father. Oh, <laughs> which, it's it's sweet. I, I did say men ain't it. Although Charlie is a hobbit, but he's not a man. He it just it because he keeps sort of like proposing, and he he's using very cautious language. But yeah. he's sort of like, I'll help you with this baby. Well, and even the first scene that they have together, he's like, he brings her tea and he's like, We could be friends. I could be your friend. No, if, if you needed someone to talk to about anything, I'm here. He literally, I could it's be cute. your friend. And she doesn't totally shut him down, but she's like, traumatized by all these other men in her life and so well, and, and you, he does very kind of brattly be like no okay that's fine bye but it's the kind of thing where it's like you can tell obviously there is like a there's a romantic chemistry yes but like a like, like a desire for sex down the line sure but it's like he's not he's not trying to get in her pants no. certainly not immediately yeah, like exactly. it's a, it actually is gallant like yeah. it feels noble and it's it's very cute, um, especially because she still consents that everyone is like terrified of her, mm -hmm, well, especially since she's waking them up in the middle of the night, shrieking every night now, screaming, blood curdling <laughs> screams <laughs> like three nights in a row. Shannon, I am so not moving to the rape caves. <laughs> Hurley, all Hurley says is. <laughs> There was an attack, and Shannon is the one that immediately makes it, like, a sexual attack. <laughs> I mean, she's like, yeah. Somehow so, even scarier than a sexual attack, because it was, like, a medically aggressive attack. <laughs> uh, so Hurley pretty astutely comes up with the idea to, like, take a census, yep. and it, it it's just... I, <sighs> I do love that it's Hurley and Boone's brains working in conjunction that figure out... That we should also get the manifest, the plane manifest. That's why it took so long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if Sun was doing this, we'd have been through we it. We would have been done. <laughs> minutes. Day three. Uh, but no, it's like people are very standoffish. And especially, I mean, it's, at least for us Americans, it's sort of in our blood mm -hmm. <laughs> to be like, <laughs> what do you want to know? Why are you, yeah. you know, why are you doing this? But I think furthermore, it's going back to this existential, uh, existential thing that is over this entire episode it's just one more baby step into accepting that, that you're... this is the new world order yeah. mm -hmm. and i think that that is thoroughly rattling yeah people and so uh zaid comes back tells them very quickly about Rousseau and the concept of the others and this is all simultaneous with claire going into pseudo labor I think it's still it's just like Braxton Hicks she has yeah. like a couple of stress contractions and we just have this this like brilliant TV moment from Hurley being like we found the manifest the names of everyone who survived all 46 of us one of them isn't in the manifest he wasn't on the plane and that's just the, I mean existential that is it, it's just terrifying and the answer we get is fine and interesting in its own right but the place that our minds go watching this the first time is that there is something m most likely magic that is capable of mimicking human oh sure sure because it's not if it's a magic 
anthropomorphic being, yeah. you would expect it to look that way. But it is infiltrating. It is pretending yeah, to be. Yeah, and that's be. that's interesting too because Said doesn't say there are other people on this island. He says we're not alone on this island, mm -hmm. which leaves it open to interpretation. Which as again, well. it's like that. That's fascinating in its own right. But to think that they would be trying to assimilate yeah. is it's that thing that they say that there's like a, a, a scientific possibility or whatever that the existence of the uncanny valley the fact that we can recognize something that's almost human but not implies that there was a need for it at one point in evolution i don't like it <laughs> Do you know? but that's where it goes yeah. and it's just and even just the way even in editing because you hear Ethan, you hear William's voice before the camera has properly cut to them. Mm -hmm. Hello there. <laughs> and then Ch Charlie and Claire's sort of like, huh? And it kind of... He's meant to have been going to get Jack because Claire mm -hmm. was having contractions. And it kind of does like one of those Sarah Michelle Gellar like yeah. <laughs> on Claire kind of like <laughs> and then he's just over there like I do so remember creepy. do you remember watching it I remember watching this episode because I was like oh my no, god you screamed no I, okay but it was after this episode was over no are we telling two different stories well it's two parts of the same story okay but it's there have been a handful of times in my life where me or someone with me has actually shrieked at something that happened on screen. Because yeah. another one with you was Cloverfield. The first time we see the monster, we both yeah. screamed. Well, because um, it comes up out of the sky. It's so <laughs> and, and actually one of them is, did you ever see The Grudge? Sir no, Taylor? we talked about yeah, that recently because we might do we might do a reaction to the Grudge if you're interested. Sarah's about to have SMG oh, a renaissance. renaissance. Uh, Jackie Burnt screamed like screamed mm. screamed at something that happened, and again, it's it's a very subtle editing trick that, oh, okay. that's very effective. Okay, um, but no, you screamed a little bit after, like minutes later. So we were taking like a bathroom break in between episodes, and I was just sitting there, and I think it was you or Andrew. It was were Andrew. Sitting, Andrew was sitting on the floor, and he had one of those gaming chairs that sits on the floor but it kind of rocks and my I had taken a shower and so my towel was laying over the like back of this gaming chair and he leaned used it as leverage at, to get to up get up and it went swinging forward with my towel on it so it looked very humanoid out of the corner of my eye and I screamed again <laughs> It was so scary. She, she was she was literally, it was kind of like Claire on the episode where she was like, he's coming, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. <laughs> the gaming chair is not on the manifest. <laughs> it was very spooky. It was one of the most spooked I've ever been. It, it, I think it was like, I was already like, I was already in on the show, but it was also something that I was just doing that, to pass the time. But that's what I mean. Where yeah. this this episode for me is a is a passing of the baton moment. Absolutely, where coming out of the beginning of the show yeah. and properly into the second so half of season one. This episode was where I was like, "Oh shit!" And so, as mentioned, you know, um, the show continues to do things. A lot of which is interesting. However, this does sort of set a bar, a precedent, a yeah. precedent that doesn't quite get cleared it's not always meant. <laughs> so um but uh, you know it's uh, i i think we're going to come out of this well we the first time we came out of it very yeah. in the middle but i think we're going to come out of it with like a a slightly i think we're going to appreciate it a de like a, a an as deep appreciation as or, we had the first or time. Or, or just a, a, an adjusted appreciation yeah. um, and i think I, I nothing can overstate the nostalgia i feel mm -hmm. for watching this cuz it was appointment tv mm -hmm. for 6 years so so i think that that's all the points that we needed to hit yep. well we'll be back after all the best cowboys of daddy issues <laughs> I actually don't remember what it's about. I think it's a jack. It's a jack of but, yeah. but, well, we'll see. Bye. Bye.